Hi, Rob. Wow, Lee, you took my thunder. I'm sorry, Rob. I just wanted you like to... to do that, don't you? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of jump out there today. See Hello, what podcast world. Let me reclaim my position as, <laughs> as the mouthpiece here. <laughs> Welcome to another exciting, enthralling, in-depth episode of... FNO InsureTech. The one and only place where you can go not only for information on all things claims, InsureTech, insurance, PNC, etc., but also hear my friend Lee Boyd and my friend Rob Beller talk about all things InsureTech. Yeah, this is the place to do that, that right? That was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. Just, did uh, you write that down? I did not. That just fell out of my brain. <laughs> I'm glad something did. Hey, you know what, Lee? What's that, Rob? We have an amazing episode today. Well, tell me about this one. Well, you're going to like this one. Am I? Yeah, because this is this is about claims. This I like is, claims. We have Tim Bruffy from Accurance. Tim is a great guy. Have you ever heard of Accurance? I've heard of Accurance. If you haven't heard of Accurance, you might live under a rock. In the claims industry. Oh, of course. In, in, in the claims industry. What do we have to look forward to? I mean, what's a, what, what is this company anyways? Accurance. You know, I would imagine today we're going to talk about uh, what Accurance is and uh, what they do and how they are changing the insurer tech and inspection game. Well, there, one of the interesting things about it is Accurance is an old timer mm-hmm. in the insure tech world. Right. Because they've been around for like more than 10 years. Whoa. So that's kind of interesting. I'm sure he'll have insights that are unique. And special. And oh, I almost forgot to say. What's up? Guess where I'm coming to the world podcast world from today? I know, but do I still guess? <laughs> you can still. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right next to me today. I am indeed. I am indeed. I We are both in Waco, Texas today. We are. We are both here. It does not happen often. Uh, we are both experiencing the uh, exact same weather. That's true. Uh, where uh-huh. that doesn't happen. Uh-huh. So I'm happy to have you here uh-huh. today, Ron. We're at the world headquarters, Building B, of the world headquarters of 470 Claims. Mm-hmm. Building 2 is what we call it. I prefer Building B, as in Beller. There you go. I like uh-huh. that. That makes uh-huh. more sense. Huh? Good job, bro. Uh, I'm hoping someday they call it the Beller Building. Well, I think you have to die first. I'm not <laughs> But whatever it takes. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. Well, then I hope they don't call it the Belly <laughs> Building. <laughs> well, I'm excited. Why don't we hop into this interview? Let's do that and let, <laughs> let our poor listeners off the hook so they don't have to hear any more of this. And so now, without further ado, let's get into our episode, uh, Meat and Potatoes, our interview with Mr. Tim Ruffy. We're here with our very special guest today. Mr. Tim Bruffy from Accurance. Hey, Tim. Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you? I am doing great. It's uh, going to be sunny today, and uh, and it's not snowing, so it's great. Because you are in... We are in Denver, between okay. Denver and Boulder. Okay. Oh, very nice area. Okay. That's, that's like beautiful, right? Yeah, I can see the mountains from here. Very nice. Do you, Are you a winter sports guy? I am. I like to... Uh, Ice fish, and I occasionally even go fly fishing in the winter. So it's uh, wow. I've, I'm uh, I don't ski so much anymore, but uh, I really do enjoy fly fishing. So I'll stretch that season a little longer than you probably should. Um, this is entirely off topic, but let's talk about ice fishing for a second. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and, I mean, <laughs> help help us understand why anybody would do that. Right, that's exactly what I was just thinking. <laughs> that that well, doesn't sound like a lot of fun. I mean, is so that where, where you get is the like fun? The, the little the little house that you put over a hole in the ice and you fish through it? Yeah, you got it. You fish. It's like uh, you know, you take a, a a tent out, and and in most states, you can't use a. Um, uh, a permanent shelter, but I have a, oh. a shelter that uh, you pop up and then you put a heater in it and then it's, um, you know, whiskey and cigars and fish. So uh, it's... Wow. Uh, oh, so okay. A L- little more okay. fun sounding now. <laughs> okay, okay. Now okay. the truth comes out. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I just okay. pictured you out there on the ice freezing. No, no really, no, honey. It gets, no, it really, so honey. I'm fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fishing today. Yeah. You know, it, uh, it is so warm in the shelter that uh, you end up taking your coat off. So it's, it's, not, it's not what people think. Uh, I guess if okay. you're standing out there in the cold, in the wind, it, it's, it's not pleasant, but it is for us. So the emphasis is more on fishing than it is on ice. Yes. The ice is uh, just there to keep you from getting wet. 
Oh, well, that's smart. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, Tim, you uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. you are the vice president of innovation and co-founder at Accurance. Can you give us um, thirty seconds or a minute on uh, on Accurance and what your company is? Sure. So we are a, uh, a technology software technology company that uh, saw an opportunity uh, a number of years ago to uh, help bridge the gap between um, data that's collected, you know, inspections and writing an estimate, and then also even taking estimates that are written and being able to look at them with machines. So we take guidelines, and the core of our business is understanding how estimating best practices, guidelines, and we have a, created a system where those can be uh, entered into uh, a solution. And then as scope notes are taken or, you know, or um, an estimate's written, then that the machines can either write an estimate or check an estimate. So really, really, you found a space between the inspection, like you said, and the estimate. So, you know, talk to us about that. You were talking about the the quality or, or the, the guidelines. What do you mean by guidelines? So, you know, as you know, most carriers have uh, a set of uh, best practices when writing an estimate. A lot of, and a lot of them are just building science. Like if you're going to do this, don't forget to do that. Or if you're going to do th this other thing, you shouldn't be doing that because you're already you're already sort of doing that um, that operation. Uh, other things are around uh, coverages and policy, and uh, those are all you know broadly broadly described as guidelines. And what we do is uh, consulting with uh, with our carrier partners and embody those in that system so it can then you know they can leverage the speed and objectivity of a machine i see so so in finding this you know i i guess how did you stumble upon this need yeah. being a software technology company where what is the story behind it well that's a that is a really interesting story because it didn't start out that way let's talk about okay. how it started okay so, so i was um uh, I was an industrial engineer for General Motors for a number of years, and then uh, my father asked me to help uh, help him with uh, a service master business that he bought. So I went from doing uh, manufacturing line um, analysis and quality assurance. I was a QA manager for a factor, a couple factories, and I left that and became a restoration contractor. As mm -hmm. a family business, so fast forward a number of years after we'd run that business, and uh, we decided we wanted to sell that. And I had been helping out with the other co-founders, working for for free, uh, basically margaritas and and uh, fajitas, and mm -hmm. then uh, decided to go full time into this. And what we were doing then is a little different than what we're doing now. And this is where it starts to. Uh, get interesting. So, okay, we were so doing. There was a there was a pivot involved. There was a big pivot. So, we we were uh, doing inspections. Um, so, imagine you you know now that there's a big trend towards inside outside models. Where we we saw that coming, and we created a an uh, an outside inspector group who could inspect a loss, document it really well. We had forms. Uh, they were in a PDF, form fillable PDFs that they would fill out and then that would all get uploaded to uh, an adjuster at a desk who would write the estimate. So this was 10 years ago, 11, right. maybe 11 years ago now. So they, one of the things that we learned is when there were in the pilot, there were 15 or so really highly skilled adjusters who had been field adjusters and understood how to, how to look at, a property, right? And write an estimate. And because they had been doing it and they knew how to interpret that visual data and do it. So they were pretty good at taking the packages that we were uploading and turning those into estimates. Well, okay. so now you, now you have a successful pilot. What is, what's typically happens, right? You want to expand. So we went to full production. Well, that 
that involved um, another 150, 150 adjusters who were uh, not uh, skilled or experienced field adjusters. They had some training, but they had never actually done um, adjusting in the field. So they didn't have that body of knowledge that you you would get if you had actually been out there doing it. And so then there was started to be some struggles, right? They didn't know how to interpret the visual data. They didn't know what they were looking at. Well, why did you take a picture of the inside of the attic? Well, it's because right. it could be spaced decking, right? It isn't, but it, mm -hmm. it, it could be, and you need to know that it's not when you're writing this estimate. And so, so what we said is as that struggle began, we started to think about what, how we could solve that problem. So just for us, we started to build a machine that could take structured input on a mobile device or on your desktop and take that structured input, your scope notes, and then use that carrier's guidelines to write the estimate to help bridge that gap between, you know, adjuster not understanding what to what they're looking at and being able to just enter the information they're seeing and have it write the estimate to the guidelines. And that was the big pivot was when yeah. we did that. And then, uh, you know, the group or we the carrier we were working with said, hey, 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 you guys need to stop <laughs> doing inspections because what you're <laughs> on to here is really great. And we need that really for everything. Yes. So that's how we that's how we got to where we are now. So you were going to put together your own workforce at first, but then you decided, wow, maybe we should be a tech company. Well, we had a workforce, and they traveled all over the country. We had little, um, uh, what were they, Honda Elements that uh, that were all huh. wrapped in, uh, you know, they're a fairly good utility vehicle and uh, have like right. a right, cool, right. right? So they were pretty good as an inspection vehicle, and those were, you know, logoed. Uh, internet was so bad at the time that we actually had satellite upload links on top of the on the roofs of these things that we could transmit photos and inspection data you know from no any place in the united states because it didn't rely on oh, cell wow. signal high tech yeah so we were we were t what i think though is we were just a little ahead of our time on the whole inside outside model that has not right. really you know as you you guys know it's, it's something that has become it's, you know, much more prevalent today than it was even right. four years ago. Right. Sure, sure. sure. It's, it's, it's the coming wave. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Tim, your, uh, your story reminds me whenever I first learned about uh, Settle Assist, which is the, the tool that sits in, you know, there with inaccuracy, and it, it's exactly what you're uh, describing. Uh, we were working with a top carrier and they said, hey, here's this new tool. You're going to get to be in this beta program. Um, but we need we need the people who are not your best, right? right? We, we we need your adjusters, your people who are maybe newer to the industry, those who need some help. Uh, you know, they have the potential, but they need some help. And so your story uh, really aligns with the exact way that back then we onboarded with you by getting you those those folks who who fit that need. And it, it was a it was a great success. Uh, I've worked with uh, different companies who who have used your product numerous times, and it's it is that tool that assists whenever you you have somebody who um, needs a little help and a little uh, understanding, and they, they they can use that tool and really go a long way. Um, that that's interesting that the pivot took place. Yeah, uh, I, I did. I didn't that. know that. That yeah, yeah, that was new. So so when did so. The pivot happens, and what 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 was the decision making process? What what came out of that? So so the here was another here was one of those other waiting for technology to catch up moments. So we made that decision based on the the, the carrier we were working with, saying, you know what, we are willing to work with you on this, and we will buy this if you build it. So that was the mm. that was an easy decision because sure. as as you as you guys know, managing. A workforce is can be challenging, and I had just done a lot of that with my other business, my service master sure. business, and so I, I was I was not unpleased to uh, to focus on technology. So so that um, that was a fairly easy decision to make. But where the where the rub came was, think about when smartphones started to get popular. It was not. 
you know, 2010. That was adjusters didn't have smartphones in 2010, but we were already building the software in in had the engine that could do this uh, that early. But I don't think there were any carriers that had one. So we had to find a transitional technology. And what, what we came up with, and again, this is something, Lee, you wouldn't probably don't know about, maybe you've heard of, is we okay. had digital pens in, in special printed forms. So imagine uh, you've got a paper form that has my little micro dots on it and a special pen that as you write on, the, on this special form, the pen is actually recording what you wrote. Wow. And then you dock that pen and it uploads that data to our servers that then could write the estimate based on this paper-based um, takeoff sheet, uh, scope sheet that you that you had filled out. Yeah, I, I had no idea you were doing that. Right. So that was tr- more of a, of a bridge technology because, again, no one had a, had a smartphone and we needed right. to be able to, to actually bring it to market. The, the challenge with that was people's handwriting is awful. You know, my own <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> yes. So, yes. so we had a lot of struggles with, you know, is that a, a G or a C or is that an L or a one? So we had to like start excluding right. certain characters because, it, you know, they, people wouldn't make form them correctly. And it was a challenge just to get people to write clearly and distinctly so that the machine could read it. And, and it was, again, we knew that the, it was a short-lived thing that uh, uh, would carry us until the until adjusters got smartphones, and then they did. And when they the first smartphones landed in the hands of of the adjusting force, we had a mobile app ready to go in the in both the Android and uh, iOS stores. Wow! So so y'all y'all were really using natural language before it was a thing. I, I read about natural language and uh, data analytics and all that now and. It sounds like you really put natural language at, at its forefront to, yeah. to, to bridge the gap. Yeah, that was it was that and a lot of um, structured input, right? So if we imagine if you're looking at this form and it says, uh, please enter the number of damaged turtle vents on the right slope or on the right slope and it, you put in five. Well, that's right. a fairly, we can limit the, uh, those kinds of fields were easier to read because we could limit the possibilities. They called it a lexicon. That, okay. that that field would actually support your entry on. So we we narrowed down what the mistakes people could make by building these lexicons per area where you would do the input. Wow, uh, that's really fascinating. I didn't know I didn't know that was part of the uh, uh, journey y'all y'all took to get to where you are now. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Learned a lot of stuff. You know, I'm uh, I'm all about trying new things and learning. So that was a fun one because we had to, right. we had to figure out, we had to build servers that would do all the, uh, do all the processing. We had to, uh, even print forms and then pad them up. So we would, we would ship out, uh, you know, pads <laughs> of, uh, like there were 100 in a pack to, to out distribute them across the country to, uh, to adjusters and, you know, handle wow. the hardware and the pens. We had to like ship pens out. And so there was a lot of logistics with that, that, that is a lot, is all gone now because uh-huh. someone goes to the app store, right. On the, you know, on their phone, they don't have to physically go to a store <laughs> and get something <laughs> that uh, they can use. It's ironic. You were a tech company that was sending paper out. Yeah. Yeah. To work on right it's, yeah, it's a field inspection right this is what we're talking about is mostly someone has to go someone has to go and lay eyeballs on the damage and right. they need to collect that data and for years this is one of the synthesis you know moments for me for years we had just thrown away your scope notes you you've done it right you've been an adjuster uh-huh. you you know you, you write them on a little piece of paper and you throw them away Right. Well, why why do that? Right. There's a lot of data there, and you if you could take your scope notes and turn them directly into an estimate, that really is much more efficient than writing it and then decoding your own handwriting and cryptic little notes and writing an estimate. Right. So you called yourself a technology company um, earlier. Is is that how you guys view yourself? Because it's obviously you have a pretty big claims background and have been around claims for a long time. Yeah, we do, right? We are we are a technology solution provider and we focus on 
on claims and uh, specifically property claims, right? We haven't, uh, you know, haven't done anything over an auto or any of the other sort of related property spaces. We, we focus on homes because that's what we know, right? Being a, a service master franchise and the other founders actually had experience in service master as well. So we all understand how houses are put together and the kinds of things that can go wrong when things go wrong. And that sort of base service matter, um, you know, service matter expertise helped right. us do what we needed to do and add that intelligence that lives behind what we're doing that to, you know, if you have, as you said, right, Lee, there's a lot of folks who, who may not have that, right? If you're just entry level, right. you've, you've probably never, you've probably may have never pounded a nail in your life. You've never, Correct. never put a, a, a shingle on, You've maybe never have done any of that, and that's getting even more and more common because people, you know, how many kids go out with their dad and strip the roof off and replace the roof today? That doesn't happen very often, right? So the the knowledge that got transferred with in previous generations and what made adjusters good adjusters was they were coming to the workforce with a base knowledge of construction. Well, that's that. I don't think that's very common now. Right. My son was an adjuster for many years. He's not any longer, but uh, he came to the to the business with no background. He had a lot of technology skills, which really ended up helping him a lot um, in becoming a good adjuster. Yep. Because that's 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 where it is today. You know, it's interesting. We interview uh, insurtech founders and companies, and it's not real often that we talk to an insurtech that is really kind of run and was was originated and thought up by claims guys right and 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 i think that's a probably a, a big advantage wouldn't you agree oh it is a it is an advantage because if when you're talking to when you're going to number one the solution you build is practical right you know what works and what doesn't work in the field you know the capabilities of the people that you're going to be working with and you're not going to build some something that looks really slick but doesn't work right it doesn't solve the core problem and because we are practical claims guys we we focused a lot more maybe to our detriment on the functionality of, than we have on the way things look you know lee it's our app is very utilitarian and works great we're in the middle of a right. of a rewrite to make it look nicer and and you know move be a little more responsive and those kinds of things but it's base core functionality is to capture data right it can it can make it very easy to take a photo by just double tapping on any label and then it takes the photo with a camera in the in the phone and then puts the caption in for you automatically well i don't know yeah. that i don't know that someone who didn't come from a claims background or an inspection background would know that that was a problem that needed to be solved right no you're you're absolutely right using all of that background knowledge is what has allowed you to to continually build and pivot the way you have yeah and uh you know our uh we we have a, a great relationship with exactware uh we have worked over the years to to support each other and our our products all of our products integrate well with Exactor. And again, some of that is because we had prior experience because we were claims guys and went to their conference and knew a lot of the people mm -hmm. there just because we used the stuff. I've been a user, I was a user of Exactimate since 1992. So, wow. so that was back in the old DOS days. So that, that also, that was another piece of this that uh, helped us get to where we were going you know, a little faster, I think, because we had a relationship, we understood the, the solution, we understood how to bridge that gap, knowledge gap, um, because mm -hmm. we had experienced the knowledge gap ourselves. Well, you know, you bring up a good point about Exactware, and that's a question I had for you. Uh, you talked about how this tool allows an inspection to turn into an estimate. And I you know, we didn't we didn't say exact where at the beginning, but is that is that the platform that that is used and inspection takes place? Um, 
things are done, and then we're able to produce an Xactimate estimate? That's correct, yeah. So um, okay. the product, the process starts with, uh, you know, as, uh, as you, you, you well know, you get an assignment from a carrier. But that all comes through exact analysis and then into Xactimate. So we integrate tightly with uh, exact analysis and Xactimate to make all that seamless. Right? We don't, you don't have to rekey the uh, the policyholder's name or any of that. It all just flows back and forth. You know, we get data, we set up the inspection, we have integrations with both Eagle View and Geomni to pull in the data that they okay. they provide, and then from there, you know, the the uh, inspector or adjuster or even a contractor can fill it out. And then once they push create estimate, that shows back up and Xactimate. They can then finalize it, you know, apply coverages or whatever they need to do, adduct deductibles, and then push, you know, basically close, you know, job job upload, uh, mark complete, and then uh, that, you know, all well, that all happens on the Xactware side. Our newest solution, okay. yeah, uh, actually kicks in at that point. And I okay. Um, so what what we can do now is we took all that that engine and that knowledge that we had, and we said, well, and this was again something we built for ourselves first. So let me talk a little about the origin story. Uh, adjuster writes, settle assist writes an estimate. Adjuster puts their hands on it. They can make changes to it, and then they mark it complete. What we wanted to know was, well, what are they changing? Is there are we right. out of calibration on the guidelines potentially? Is there some drift happening we're not aware of? Uh, are we? What are we missing in our inspection application? Something that's common. So we built a solution that could take that estimate after it had been finalized by the adjuster and pull it pull it into our solution and then look at it and compare it to the estimate that we sent. We can. Also, and this was where the one of those aha moments, we mm -hmm. can now compare that estimate to one that was uh, compare that estimate to the guidelines, and so we're Perfect. we're now able to do that. It takes about six seconds, and then we can fire off them um, either through a, a different mobile app that we have that can give you that, or just a report that says, "Hey, on line sixteen, if you're going to do that, you probably should document your file with an F nine note." And I things see. like that, right? It's, it does a lot more than that, but that's just an example. And then the next time, let's say the adjuster opens that up or, or an inspector opens it up, makes the correction, then we have a rule we can as part of the configuration. If there's an F9 note, and even if there's an F9 note with these, one of these keywords in it, it can even be that smart, it will then allow it to go through without saying, hey, on line six, you forgot to put your F9 note. Right. So that has been that has been eye-opening for us because we also we got that data on what people are changing. But now that solution has is becoming very popular with uh, with carriers and with uh, all you know all sorts of groups, managed repairs, because it it can take an estimate from from in, that was written by anyone, it has a very, a very shallow learning curve because it's a report that says tells you what to do when you get it. Right, you're on line six, on line ten, whatever it is, it gives you and then gives you instructions on potentially how to remediate that. You know, you you bring up a very interesting point. It sounds as though you are able to collect a large amount of data. Uh, you're able to understand. Uh, not only how people are scoping losses, but then how they're changing them, what they're doing with it. You're probably able to track trends and give that back. What 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 do you do with this mountain of data that that you have? And am I correct that you collect a mountain of data? We do. We do collect a mountain of data. Uh, there is. Uh, it has. We haven't begun to mine everything that we have, but what we are doing today is we can. Help a help a group that we're working with spot uh, potential trends or maybe a an outbreak of viral tribal knowledge. And you know you know what I mean okay. when I say that. Right. Uh, right. There's a group. There's someone somewhere who said, "Hey, we never do it that way. This is the way we do it." And and then that spreads. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so right. That's exactly right. And so we're able to help by providing some uh, some dashboards and even. Um, 
uh, uh, well, there's a, a solution that Microsoft has called Power Pivot, which allows you know some really deep diving that we can pr- we can provide a report that is this Microsoft Power Pivot. It's it's pivot tables on steroids, where uh-huh. where the um, whoever's trying to do that and wants to do that forensic that investigation can look to see do we have a do we have a, a an outbreak or do we have a um, a potential we've miscommunicated a guideline that um, we need to you know either do some reinforcement on or um, perhaps we need to change it because we're seeing where maybe there's a trend and this is the carrier now looking at you know the reports they get back from us and able to you know run their business on data with data that they have never had access to before because they never had that level right. of uh, of analysis available. Well, and it sounds like they can get their hands on it so much quicker right now by using this application that within a day or two of inspections, if everybody's using it, you know, yes, we're buying roofs in that hailstorm, sure. or yes, the wind is totaling roofs, or it's not. Uh, and then you can set reserves earlier. You can just do um, a large amount of, of things with it. So, um, you know, and then we're talking here about uh, about Xactimate. Uh, where everything goes is, is is that the only estimating platform uh, y'all are using right now? It is right now, yes. Um, okay. Yep. That uh, that is you know that's our who our our, our partnership is with, and that's who we are right, working yeah. with. So they uh, they are and 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 you know everything works so nice. It all is integrated. Links are within it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what about what about this uh, quality assist? So that is the name of, of the the check application that is, right that is the that's the sort of take settle assist and turn it around backwards and you have quality assist because it it takes an estimate that was written instead of writing it for you okay and, and does that analysis that uh and then gives you all that you know feedback and some things that we're seeing that are f- pretty interesting and you'll you'll appreciate yeah. this um so if you're when we're working with different groups perhaps and this is uh, maybe there's staff adjusters and um, independents. And one of the things we find is that independents respond and get calibrated much more quickly than staff groups. And that's okay. And, and we think there's multiple, we're not, we're engineers, not psychologists. So we have to try to uh-huh. <laughs> speculate about things that we don't necessarily know the real answer to. But what we think is that independents are used to being more. You know, react. You know, reacting to someone saying, "Hey, this is not the way we do it. This is the this is the carrier's guidelines." You probably you know better about this than I do. Maybe you could talk a little bit about <laughs> why you think that's true. Well, you know, I just think it. You know, as soon as we get it out, it it's it's make or break. If we do not adhere to it, there's no there's no wiggle room. There's no grace period. Any guidelines have to be changed, and they have to be changed asap. Mm-hmm. And so it could just be a, a different way of getting it out. Sometimes our, you know, sometimes the IA arm has a more direct uh, connection to its workforce than maybe a staff. Mm-hmm. Maybe the staff is working in different regions and different states under different umbrellas, and it just takes time to roll it out. Uh, where sometimes the IA company is able to be a little more nimble in their workforce working those claims. Um, just off the top of my head, I would assume that might be yeah, why. Yeah, that makes sense. And and we do see eventually, right, when we say it's ne- not never, it just takes a little longer. So instead of 30 days, it might be 45 days that uh, right. they get everyone in calibration. And that's that's one of the things that our solution does that, that uh, gets overlooked. And we don't do a good job of talking about that benefit is the – the near instantaneous calibration of a workforce across a dis, you know a geogra- geographically distributed workforce so that that has to be really challenging because traditionally the way that this process happened was through education right you have me you have meetings you send out emails you might have documents right, right. seminars seminars uh, all those things but we do two things one we work with the with the carrier groups to, you know, help them define their guidelines, maybe a little more, more black and white than they traditionally have, and then disseminate those to the people that are actually doing the work in near real time. And so that, that process of calibration 
uh, we couldn't see it with Settle Assist. We didn't necessarily know. We knew what com- how often people used it and things like that. We didn't know how often they were changing things. So that again, that's why Quality Assist was born. But um, we're now able to even see how long does it take for that calibration process to happen. Right. And and then I'm wondering, can quality assist work on an estimate that's not associated with settle assist? It sure can. It could be for any peril. Okay. It could be a vandalism. So it's or a, a freestanding. It is freestanding. Freestanding it, product. They can go together, but they can to- very well be freestanding. We have, uh, you know, uh, any peril set up. We even have a, an NFIP um, guideline set that has been very created, nice. which is, as you, if you've ever done NFIP work, you know. There's a lot. It's government, so there's plenty of right. <laughs> plenty of rules around it. Very structured. Very. You have to do it a certain way. <laughs> yes. Well, that 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 is great for our carriers listening today to know that uh, you can work uh, in tandem with it, but then you can also work separately. So that that's a very good thing. And then you know you you have one more uh, use case that I'm aware of that that your website even talks about, and this is the uh, collaboration tool. Yeah. Is there anything you can tell us about? Sure, that, that one is uh, that one was built out of a, a necessity. So, collaboration is a way to take an assignment and s- share the ability to collect that the data on that inspection with another person. So, let's uh, let's use the most common. Um, use case, but there's lots of others. Common use case would be I'm an adjuster and um, mostly staff adjusters, I guess. I'm not allowed to climb anything over a 7 on 12. So I have to have someone come out and assist me in that inspection and they'll get up on the roof and look at it for me and then give me that data. Well, traditionally that was delivered as a PDF and maybe the adjuster's SD card and the point and shoot camera and that's how they would hand that back. So then, right. you know, you've, you've seen this. And then, so then someone had to, the adjuster had to take that information from the inspection PDF and then enter it into, and into Xactimate and create an estimate. Well, what we did was we made it so that without having an account, right, the, the adjuster on site can simply enter the email address of the person that they want to collaborate with. It could be either as an adjuster at a desk, or it could be someone that's out in the field, and you send that collaboration assist request off to this inspector who then gets a special, let's call it a special reduced functionality version of Settle Assist. And they can take photos and caption them, and they can collect data. But once they're done, right, they don't write the estimate. They just need to return that to the to the adjuster who can then finalize it and add maybe the elevation damage or if there's interior, they can add all that and settle assist, push the button and it'll write the estimate. So all that data flows back, doesn't have to get rekeyed and all the photos show it with their captions, show up in Xactimate and you know, it just is a much more efficient uh, workflow. So um, I want to talk a little bit about being uh, an insure tech company, we, we, our audience has, uh, a lot of carrier po- folks in it, but also a lot of people from the insure tech world. And it's kind of funny that, you know, a company founded around 2007 makes you an old timer <laughs> in, in, in the world of insure tech. But, but frankly, you are, I mean, you guys, uh, uh are, are, a early entrant to the insure tech world. Wouldn't you agree with that? For sure. Right. We, we were actually uh, a few years ahead of our time. I think uh, <laughs> it has taken, right. it has taken, uh, uh, well, I will share an observation I've made about that in that Please. Um, it seems that about four years ago, there was a, an, all of a sudden an awakening to that, the fact that machines can assist us in writing estimates and checking estimates before that time in our early days what you would what you would have is a lot of a lot of folks who would say that writing an estimate is like um, is a 
is a, what a craftsman does. Writing estimates are are things that you craft, handcraft, and each one is unique and special. And right, they, that, that right, like like art. It was, it like was an art. art. Adjusting is an art. You've heard it. Uh, yes. And so that that cha- started to change. I think about the time InsureTech started to become a thing. There was all of a sudden this. Uh, you hear things like straight through processing and all the things that right. you, you know. Lemonade had their little thing about um, you know we have the we can re- replace that camera for that uh, homeowner and that policyholder in six seconds or something. So people's right. eyes and attitudes started to change that machines can indeed help us. Computers and systems and robotics and all those you know software robots can actually help us be more efficient, accurate, objective, make policyholders happier. Uh, They can um, uh, get more data than they've ever had. Uh, They can make, they can, you know, manage their workforce in a different way. So that, that didn't really catch on until four years ago. And those first few years were, were tough because you had to sell past the art of this solution. You know, this is, Adjusting isn't an art; it's really a science. Right, and here's how you apply that science. I've been out on ride-alongs within the last ten years, where the adjuster was, you know, he had a a pen and a um, a clipboard, and you know, hand wrote, you know, all 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 the data that that they were collecting. Um, I mean, it's it's always been a fairly low tech world. Mm-hmm. And I think like you were saying earlier about the, about the, um, about our phones, about the smartphone, it, 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 it opened the world up and the world of functionality up so wide. I'm sure people started saying, well, why aren't we using this in our work? Right? Yeah. Yeah. It took a little while for the uh, light bulb to come on that smartphones aren't just for playing angry birds and uh, making mm-hmm. phone calls, right? It's uh, it was, uh, these are tools that can be used to make us more efficient and better and faster. And, and that, that didn't happen right away when smartphones first came out. And, and, you know, I think the, the, the discussions about machine learning, you know, even, you know, we use a very primitive sort of the most primitive, they, they call it algorithmic based machine learning to do a lot of what we do. That, that wasn't an accepted thing until, you know, four or five years ago when it started to become mainstream, even, you know, storing data in the cloud, we have our own servers and our own cloud and I'm air quoting cloud um, that we store our data in. But that has even become more okay in the past couple of years than it, it would have been completely forbidden. Unacceptable. That's right. Yeah. In the yeah. prior years. Yeah. So is it, it must be weird for you guys to, you were kind of out there on your own. There wasn't even a word in sure tech yet. And you know, you're this technology <laughs> company in a, in an, in an art form, if you will. And so what's it like today? I, I mean, it must be very different. You're now you're one of many voices instead of kind of a lone evangel evangelist out there on your own. What, what now you're part of a whole movement. Is that different? Yeah. It's different in that it's a uh, it, it's a validation that uh, you know that what we were what we had set out to do the problems that we set out to solve were are something that are worth solving because others are now you know jumping in and saying uh, this is this is a problem worth solving and with technology can help so I I I am actually uh, we're we're all pleased to see that this has become uh, something that. You know, even venture capitalists and private equity and others are investing in, and and there's a lot of really smart people who are smarter than us who are, you know, creating these amazing solutions, and a lot of them are very nichey, right? There, they can solve this tiny little part of the workflow, and but yet it's a big enough. There's enough of them, or it's a big enough niche that they actually build a business on it. And I I I, I love seeing it. You know, so during our conversation here, it just gets my brain thinking uh, where where this can take us, where where your your tool can can lead us down. And y'all are full of visionaries because we we go to a lot of intertech conferences and we see people who are um, doing inspections and then we see people who help. But you 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 saw the future before 
before anyone else did. I'm curious, is there any way you can give us a little insight into y'all's roadmap? Where, what is next? Where, where, where can we expect to see you? Uh, so, so the, a lot of it is evolution. A lot of things are evolution, not revolution. And a lot of what you'll see from us will be evolutionary, but may appear revolutionary. Uh, here, I'll give you an, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little glimpse into the future. Um, okay. So one of the things that is a very high opportunity within most uh, adjusting organizations is applying the proper coverages based on the policies and endorsements because it can be a, a can of worms trying to figure out for the for the poor guy who's doing that job applying the right so this this form this uh, this policy then gets overwritten in a bunch of ways by an endorsement and then people forget to catch that mm-hmm. so it's normally a one of the if not the top opportunity so here's what we're doing we are working to gather those policies and endorsements and and know what they mean for each carrier so that as we're wow. as we're either writing the estimate or reading an estimate someone else wrote we'll be able to say hey you know this is a, an ACV on that part of this you know maybe it's an ACV roof mm-hmm. or or and there's no endorsement or it's a backup of sewer and drain and there's no rider to give them more coverage we can get a lot smarter by having more data. Right. That's, uh, that is next level stuff right there. Yeah. Does this, um, tie into the recent acquisition? You guys just announced a very recent acquisition within the last few weeks. It does. We, uh, we, we were looking to expand our offering and, uh, this is kind of ironic because we started out, our solution started out, uh, the initial offering was, Hey, we'll go do, inspections for water losses, right? And help you with that. Okay. And then uh, our, our, our flagship carrier, first carrier said, no, 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 our biggest problem is wind hail. You need to go solve that and learn roofs. So that was a that was something <laughs> that was a bit of a twist. But so now fast forward to today and we, we, because of the things we do, we get a lot of requests to, you know, start applying our um, logic patterns and the solutions that we build to other pro- more in in different perils. So, water mitigation and and the the acquisition you're talking about is our recent acquisition of National Water. And okay. National Water is a uh, water mitigation auditing company. So you can imagine uh, software company. So you can imagine uh, Quality Assist for for water mitig- water mitigation. Wow. And their roots. So they've been around a little while. Their roots are in NFIP. They started out. Um, auditing uh, the mitigation part of the national flood insurance program estimates that were had that mitigation, and then you know helping guide that um, you know that adjuster to to get to a, 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 a science based. And as you know, right, the S five hundred, uh, the IICRC S five hundred has a set of rules that are you know, psychometrics and, you know, the science of drawing a property. And there's a lot of guidelines that apply there, but then there's also some carrier rules that get tacked on that. So it was, it's a perfect fit because they're doing the same things we do, but they are already doing it for mitigation. Uh, They also have a solution that's much like quality assist, where if an adjuster gets on site and there's been no estimate written for mitigation, they can enter their scope notes it's the sense familiar mm. into this into the mobile yeah, app yeah. and it will write the estimate write the estimate for them so that it's a it's a perfect marriage uh, and we're very excited right. about that Big, yeah neat deal well we're we were really excited to have you with us today cuz we've spoken you know lee and have done you guys have done a lot of work together and lee's always spoken so highly about your tool and uh, we wanted to have the perspective of somebody who's been working in the in the in the area for a long time, and and it's cool to have uh, um, claims people on who speak claims ease or whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever exactly. what are our natural language? language. Some language there, natural yes. language. Uh, we've really enjoyed it. I hope that you would uh, come back and join us again as as your uh, tools and products continue to um, evolve, as you as you said, and uh, and and 
keep us up on what's going on. For sure. I, uh, this was this was great. Really enjoyed the discussion, and uh, hopefully, there someone will get something out of it somewhere. Uh, with my, I am sure they will. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tim. Right. Thank All you, right. Tim. Thank you. You guys have a good day. That was a very technical conversation of a little more uh, claims technical than we usually are. Yeah, I love that conversation. <laughs> Do you? That was right up your alley. That was right up my alley. I was able to jump in there and, and ask, ask some questions. Of course, I've known Tim a long time, and I've known of Accurant for many, many years. Um, so I'm very, uh, I, I understand their product. Uh, but it, it's great to always have that kind of conversation. Uh huh. I mean, you you were two you were two claims people having a conversation about technology. We were we we were. I I am a claims person at heart, and I get to work in technology and innovation, and that is exactly what he is. So we are we're like minded. We are both vice presidents of uh, innovation. Yeah, we forgot to bring that up. We did forget is it to bring that up. Too late for us to bring that up now. No, I think we'll I think just let it be. Maybe right. I can bring that up next time I see him. Yeah, or maybe on our next episode. Maybe we'll interview you on an episode. What do you think about that? Ooh, that'd be interesting. I like that. Lowest viewership yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about a couple of things. Um, these guys are visionaries. I mean, they got into this a long time ago. Uh, they were claims guys. Right, very, right. Very interesting. You know, they they were people who saw that they wanted to do something and – they went down a path and they went deep down a path all, all the way to having vehicles, uh, creating these, you know, ways to use these pins that write back to computers. I didn't know about that. That was very yeah, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. But a lot of times we interview these insure tech companies and they have a, a path that they're going mm -hmm. and no one's going to change their mind. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I do this and I'm, I'm going to do that well, even though you might want something different. Right. Where this company said, you know what? I don't mind pivoting. I don't mind being nimble enough and change. And whenever we change, we're going to go full force. And that's what they did a couple of different times. Yeah. You know, uh, the pivot, the concept and idea of pivot is really integral in the tech world. And there's right. company after company after company that was heading down one path. They saw a dead end. They pivoted as fast as they could and they turned out to be you know, a big, a big winner. I mean, I, I, right. I, know, I know several examples of that. In fact, one of my favorite podcasts is masters of scale right right and they have a episode on, on pivoting oh okay um, so but it, it's interesting to talk to a company that has really obviously successfully done it right and really at the end of the day they at the beginning they needed to be they wanted to do, help inspections today they are helping inspections but the way that they got to there uh, was very different than what they ever envisioned they thought they might be the workforce uh, they thought they might just be an inspection helper, and now they're now they're helping you produce accurate estimates at the beginning and at the end. There was uh, some conversation around your very favorite word in the world, and 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 what it's is that? It's a four-letter word. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to help me out on that one. Okay. Do we have a ability to bleep out? Beep. <laughs> it's data. Oh, data. Data. Yeah, that, you know, they just got my mind racing whenever I'm thinking about the mountains and mountains of data, how long it takes to do inspections, uh, what is the most used uh, in, in, you know, inspection, what are they seeing? If, if I do a claim in Denver, what am I replacing? Quick, uh, quick references for insurance carriers for reserves, accurate estimating, just the amount of data that they can do. Uh, I, and as Tim said, they haven't even touched all that they can, the metadata that, that, that they have at their fingertips, but I'm very excited to see where they go with that. Yeah, I liked his label that he dropped called uh, Inside Outside, which uh, mm -hmm. we've never used, but I mean, that we're super involved in it at our company. We are. We, I mean, that's the big trend that we see is that there's a outside resource who gathers right. the data and an inside resource who writes or, or works with the data right. and puts it into a finished form to send back. Yeah. And they're trying to connect those worlds because a lot of times you have a desk adjuster who says, I need an inspection. Please give it back to me. And they're, they're coming back in PDFs. They're coming back in photos are coming through in loose assets where they're trying to build a gap and say, go ahead and collect it. And then we'll give you an estimate. Mm -hmm. uh, being integrated with the exact analysis, the way they are uh, just is a huge huge win for them because that's 
that's where business gets done a lot of times. That's where business gets done. That's where business gets done. I like and that phrase. I do. And so they're they're um, you know, they're they're able to really streamline and, and keep it slick and, and smooth. And how about just quickly, how about that what this water play with national water? That's yeah, I didn't really I nice. didn't see that coming. Uh, I don't know why I didn't. I mean it, it makes total sense. They need uh, and have a desire. I'm sure they're getting pushed into the water world. It's a very complicated world. Water losses are not typical health. They're very complicated. And so why not have that purchase? Why not have that uh, force behind you and really do the best water claims that, that you can? Well, we're really grateful to Tim for his time today and really grateful to Lee for talking so much today. We're going to give him a hard time about that for a while. So if you're a regular listener, please join in and, and uh, let's give Lee Boyd a hard time. Um, and, but, um, uh, and it's a pleasure to be in Waco. It's always a pleasure to be here and to share the, um, share the place with you and the microphone. Thanks, Rob. But it is nice to have you sitting right it's next to nice me. nice to sit next to each other and do a podcast, isn't it? Yeah, you actually leave soon, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> just just curious. Not soon enough, trust me. Um, and, uh, and for one of the last times, our um, slowly transitioning out producer, Anthony Souter, has a message for everybody. Yeah, guys, uh, you know, just like we tell you every week, one of the best ways to uh, give us feedback or show that you, um, you know, appreciate and like the show is give us a rating review wherever it is you listen to your your podcasts and also tweet at us. Our uh, Twitter handle is at podcast FNO. You can also follow us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash FNO podcast. And uh, we'd really appreciate it if you guys shared this with uh, other potential listeners that you think would enjoy these interviews. Thanks, Anthony. And thank you, Tim and Lee. Thank you, Rob. And I can't wait to see you. Now. I think I see you probably next at PLRB. Yeah, ne- PLRB. That's a very exciting time in our industry. Very exciting time for us. So um, thank you, Podcast World, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>